So, you are a web developer and have spent the last few months learning React. You probably built a couple cool websites, learned how to use React hooks, but you keep hearing about people using this thing called Next.js. You might have gone to Twitter and seen people building 1 million MRR SaaS companies saying that you have to use Next. So, you might be tempted to just vibe code your next big project since you don't really want to spend time learning a new technology. But wait, in this video I'll teach you everything you need to know about Next.js in only 6 minutes. So let's start with this. Next.js is a React framework. It gives you routing, server rendering, API routes, image optimization, and everything you need to know to make your website rank super high in SEO right out of the box. So instead of setting up your whole stack manually, you just start building. To start things off, you will need to set up a Next.js project by running the command npx create next app. This will create the boilerplate code for your project. A Next.js project has a very familiar folder structure. This means that you will be able to immediately familiarize yourself with any Next.js code base just by looking at it. Check out the project on the screen. This project by default looks a lot like a normal React project, but the only main difference is that it has a next.config.ts file. This file is simply used for customizing and configuring anything in your app, ranging from environment variables to your build instructions. Now, the main difference is that if you're working with Next.js, you can forget libraries such as React Router DOM. In Next.js, routing is done purely based on your file system. There are two types of routing that you can do in Next, the app and the pages router. The app router allows you to create a route by simply creating a folder with the name of a route and then render a component inside of a page.tsx file inside of that folder. So if you wanted to make a, an about page on your website, you would create an about folder inside of the app folder. And then inside of the about folder, you would just make a page.tsx file and put the component inside of there. For the pages router, you have a folder called pages and whatever file or folder you put inside of it, the name of that file will become a route. So if we were to go with the same example, we would make the about file using the about.tsx file inside of the pages folder. Now out of the two options, the app router is the most scalable option and the pages router has become legacy since Next.js 13. By default, components in the app folder are server components. This means that they run on a server and only send HTML to the client super fast. This means that in a server component, you don't have access to client browser features like the on click of a button. So the component you're seeing on the screen is a server component. But the problem is that there's a button which has an on click, which is a browser event. So the handle click function that is called when you click the button won't work. When you need interactivity like the use state hook, other React hooks, or an on click, for example, you need to create a client component. And you do that by creating a new file for a component and adding the use client tag at the top of your file. This will tell Next.js to render it on the client. Then you can actually call this component inside of a server component. So and the idea is that you have a server component for your route, your page, and then you have a separate client component that you call on the server whenever you need stuff like hooks or browser interactivity. Now, why would you want to have a server component in the first place? Well, they are great for performance and SEO because they allow users to have a faster initial page load due to having less JavaScript being sent to the browser. And also since server components have pre-rendered HTML, search engine crawlers from Google, for example, can easily find keywords to rank your website higher. You can now, in Next.js, mix and match both different types of components for optimal performance. Now, what about when you need to fetch some data? Well, in React, you would normally have some sort of uh, function that would call the fetch API, and you would put that inside of a use effect hook. But in Next.js, you can do it directly inside of your component by making your component definition be an async function and just using the await inside of it. Next, we'll handle caching, revalidating, and loading the UI for you. If you wanna actually create a loading state 
for when the data is loading, you can simply just make a loading.csx file in the same folder that you created the route that is fetching that data. And whenever the information is loading, that component will be rendered. But in that example, I called a public API. But one of the cool things about Next is that you can create your own API directly in the project using API routes. To create an API endpoint, you simply make a folder called API and every folder you put inside of it with a file called route.ts will become an API endpoint. For example, if I for some reason want to make an endpoint called hello, I'll just create a folder called hello inside of the API folder and then put a route.ts file inside of it. And I can create get, post, put and delete functions inside of it to handle the different HTTP methods that that API route will handle. And you can see that you can handle everything that an API would require without needing express. And it's all handled inside of the same project that you're building your front end in. Also, another cool thing is that Next is built to optimize for you. It means that even simple things like rendering an image is way better. In Next, you use the image component and it will automatically compress and lazy load images for you. This will improve performance without you having to do absolutely anything. Finally, one of the main advantages of using Next is the SEO benefits. For every single route I make on a Next project, I'm able to clearly define SEO metadata for it. For example, if I'm going to make a website and I want to make an About Us page, that part is important because it has a lot of high ranking keywords and information about my website that would help the website rank. So I can easily set SEO metadata like the title, description, and even keywords like this. This is insanely beneficial for you because if you want to have success ranking on Google, especially in today's age of AI, you have to have some sort of website that is optimized for SEO. Now you're ready to build your next SaaS idea without vibe coding it all the way through. If you want to learn more about Next.js, I can definitely make a Next.js crash course. And also, if you want to learn React from scratch, check out my new React.js course for beginners. This course will teach you everything you need to know to go from a beginner to advanced. I've been getting really good feedback from the first few students, and we currently have early bird pricing still. So if you want to use the code early 100, you will get 20% off. Go to courses.pedrotech.co or click the link in the description. If this video helped, leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next. So thank you so much for watching, and I see you guys next time.